Turn in your Bible now to the book of Jonah, chapter 1. Jonah chapter 1. We're going to look at this morning, verses 1 through 3. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you that I'm going to preach the first part of this message today and the next part next Sunday. And then it may even go from there. Okay? We'll just have to see. But uh, I, as I was praying about what to preach this Sunday, all week long, this just kept coming to me and coming to me. And I kept saying, no, Lord, I don't want to preach on Jonah. I don't want to preach on Jonah. And he said, are you going to do what you want to do or what I want you to do? And I said, yes, Lord. I understand. And uh, I do have... If, if somebody were to walk up on me in that office and, not, and I don't know they're here, they would probably hear me talking and then think I was crazy. Because I do talk to God that way, you know. I, I'll, I'll talk out loud. And, uh, and now, I haven't heard his voice saying that loud, but, you know, I, I know what he's saying to me. And uh, the reason I was, I guess, arguing is because I know what Jonah's about. And I wanted to come in, it's, it's Thanksgiving, uh, November the 1st, running in Thanksgiving season, and then we're going into Christmas, and this is the happy, joyous, you know, merry, uh, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so I said, Lord, I don't want to preach on rebellion. And he said, again, are you going to preach what I tell you or what you want to? I said, okay. Because Jonah is about rebellion, and people don't want to talk, they don't want to hear about rebellion, uh, but we know that it's important. So, I, so bear with me. And uh, uh, I believe that God has something for you this morning. Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. I want you to pay attention to that. That sentence right there. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He chose. He chose to flee from God's presence. That was his choice. He wasn't forced into a place where God wasn't. He chose to run from God. And then it says, he went down to Joppa, not Alabama. <laughs> there is a Joppa, Alabama, isn't there not, Keith? <laughs> he preached there last Sunday. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Twice in one verse. Two times in one verse, God makes sure that we see that Jonah chose to run from God's presence. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray right now, Lord, that you will minister this word and that it will speak to our hearts and we will receive it with gladness and thanksgiving <laughs> and we give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. The word of God is relevant to today. The road to rebellion. What does it look like? What's it paved with? What are some of the warning signs? What are some of the things that come down the pike? What, are, what do we look for when, when we look for rebellion? Everybody knows, and I, I'm skipping down to verse uh, to the third point there, but that rebellion, the Bible t tells us, is rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Everybody knows that and heard that and, and bought the T-shirt that says it, right? <laughs> so, so that's understood. But the Word of God is relevant to today. And, and you say, but Jonah is a story about a man being swallowed by a fish. Well, after we get through preaching this series on Jonah, you won't want to go in the ocean. <laughs> Some of you got that. So. <laughs> huh? Huh? I don't know what you're talking about. Huh? The Word of God is relevant. It's not just about a great fish. It's about a condition of a man's heart. And it's about a choice that a man made. Jonah's name. I want you to look at number four up there. Jonah's name means a dove, harmless and weeping. That was his name. And Amitai means truth. 
He was, he was a man harmless as a dove from a city named Truth. God, you see, nothing is circumstantial with God, y'all. <laughs> nothing is circumstantial with God. Now, your circumstances, you know, that, that may happen that way. But in God's realm of, of, of living, in God's realm of life, in God's realm of creation, in God's realm of, of walking and wo- working with us, nothing is circumstantial. He has a plan, and He follows that plan. So Jonah's name, is not, it just wasn't an accident that he was named the, the harmless as a dove. And it wasn't just a circumstance that he was from the city of truth. Now, Jonah, some people say, well, Jonah was a pretty much unknown guy. He wasn't someone that you read about a whole lot other than this one book in the Bible that was, that was attributed to Jonah. But uh, so who was this man, Jonah? Well, I want you to look over in 2 Kings chapter 14, verse 25. Robbie's going to have that up there. Uh, Jonah received some instruction from God even in 2 Kings 14, 25. How many of you know that Jonah was mentioned another time other than just in the book of Jonah. Honestly, how many of you knew that? All right, two or three of you. He restored the territory of Israel from the entrance of Hamath to the Sea of the Arabah according to the word of the Lord, God of Israel, which he had spoken through his servant Jonah, the son of Amittai, the prophet, who was from Gath-Hefer, or Hefer, however you want to say that. Now, in, in preaching this today, I understand that there's a gentleman here that would know a whole lot more about this area of the, of the world than I do, and that would be Esau. <laughs> so, brother, <laughs> you bear with me, because uh, you're probably sitting there, he needs to say this, and he needs to, t- he needs to tell him this, and he needs to go here, and he needs to there. And, and, I, and so uh, I'm already feeling intimidated a little bit, you see. <laughs> uh, but anyway, and then, then I said, so we've got Isa here, and, now, and then we've got Teen Challenge coming. I said, Lord, what are you doing here today? What are you doing? What are you trying to do? So, but this is the second time that Jonah was mentioned. He was God's messenger of mercy in 2 Kings. He was God's messenger of mercy to Israel. Okay? So he was the messenger of mercy, the harmless as a dove, the one of truth. The, the son of truth. And so we find here that this man, he loved, he loved his nation. He loved his heritage. He, he loved his people. He loved his Jewish uh, upbringing and, and the fact that he was just... He, he, was, man, he was a Jew through and through. He was Jewish from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. He loved his nation and he loved his people. And he gladly was the messenger of grace to the nation of Israel. And then God speaks to him. And he says, hey, Jonah. Yep. He thought he was fixing to get another assignment of be the messenger of peace. Maybe the messenger of grace. Maybe he was going to go somewhere and speak harmless, be harmless as a dove. And he was going to have a great assignment to his people once again. It was something that, that in anticipation as, as God would speak to Jonah, Jonah spoke with God. God knew Jonah and Jonah knew God. Jonah knew God's voice. He had heard it before and he's hearing his voice again. Many of you sitting in here, in here today, you may not realize it, but you have heard God's voice many times. You have heard God speak to you in times of trial, in times of trouble, when things weren't going right, when things were going bad. You have heard God speak to you and you don't need to deny God never talks to me. If you've never heard His voice, you've read His Word and He speaks to you through His Word. But Jonah knew God's voice. And so when God began to speak to Jonah, Jonah was ready to listen. He wanted to hear what God had to say to him this time. Because that assignment in Second Kings was a great assignment. One that he cherished. One that he loved. He couldn't wait to maybe have another assignment of the same kind. To deliver a message of hope and peace and restoration and grace to his nation. But God didn't give him that message. God said, Jonah, I need you to go to the city of Nineveh that great city, for their wickedness has come up before me. 
And Jonah said, Whoa. You want me to do what? Don't you know my name is Jonah, harmless as a dove? Don't you know that uh, I, I, I come from a lineage of truth? And God knew both of those things. And Jonah, and I want you to think for a minute. That would be like asking, and Paul told me this last night, so I'm going to borrow it from you, Paul. I attribute this to Paul. This, Okay, right. That would be like asking a Jew who suffered in the Holocaust to go to his tormentor and preach to him. That might even be like asking an American to go to ISIS and preach to him. Nineveh was about 800 miles east of Jerusalem, located in modern-day Iraq, across the Tigris River from Mosul. Was I right? <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> is that right? Is that not awesome? See, it's it, this is a God thing. You being here today, brother. <laughs> now, you take Jonah in Jerusalem. Thereabouts, and God's asking him to go to Iraq and preach to the people who hate them. You see, this modern day hate between Jews and Muslims, it started with Isaac and Ishmael. It's not a new thing, it's been going on. And you know what? It's going to continue to go on. It's going to continue to go on. But here Jonah receives this assignment to go to Nineveh. And he said, prophesy or preach. And if you look that up, it means to preach loud and strong. Loud and strong. Remember now, he's the harmless as a dove guy. He doesn't know what it means to preach loud and strong. He's always been the messenger of peace. And now he's being asked to go and preach loud and strong a message of repentance to people that he hates and people that hate him. Heard on the news yesterday, right here in Birmingham, they finally arrested a guy who was a co-worker. Was, they worked at Home Depot, I think. And this man who worked with he worked with the other guy, he hid, lied in wait until he found the guy and murdered him. That's hate, isn't it? Right in our own backyard, that's hate. Many of you have experienced hate. You've been on the receiving end of hate and you've been on the giving end of hate. Now, I want you to say, boy, Jonah, you were just wrong. I want you to put yourself in Jonah's place right now. Many of you have been there before. When God's given you an assignment, and you said, God, I can't do that. You don't understand who I am. Oh, yeah, God knows who you are. I look back at, at, uh, in the Bible, Hosea and Gomer. Gomer was Hosea's prostitute wife and he wanted to put her away he didn't want to live with her anymore and most of you wouldn't right but what did God ask Hosea to do love her purchase go back and purchase her redemption what God that is unfair That is unfair for you to ask me to do something like that. But Hosea was responsible. He did what God told him. 
Jonah. He just simply said, I'm not going. He just said, I'm not going. And then he made a way to make sure he didn't go. And he wanted to flee from the presence of God. You see, Jonah, this unknown, said, Hey man, I'm just a country preacher from Galilee, Lord. Why don't don't you send one of them well-known preachers or somebody else in Jerusalem, why don't you send one of those guys out there to Nineveh? In our day and age, if we brought that to God, send one of them TV preachers or, or, or send, or send Isa. He already knows the area. Send Isa over there. God, don't send me. That's the guy. If Jonah was here, say, here, here he is, Lord. Here, I'm raising his hand for you. God, this man right here, you need to send him. I'm not going. I'm not going. How many of you have just flat out ever told God no? We've got some honest folks in here. Some of you have never told him that, but you've done it with your actions. Oh, preacher, you shouldn't have gone there. You shouldn't have gone there. Well, I would never tell God no, but I ain't going to church. You don't tell me that again. Never mind. But God wanted Jonah to go. Did did God know who Jonah was? Did God know Jonah's strengths? Did God know what... Did He know what Jonah's name meant? He sure He did. He knew his strengths. He knew his witnesses. uh, Weaknesses and witnesses. He knew all of this. But you see, the message to go to to Nineveh, the great city, these were enemies to the Jewish nation. And and Jonah just... he couldn't connect the dots. He couldn't connect the dots. So he could not make this work in his mind. There are some of you in here this morning that God has got you in a place and you just can't connect the dots. You're sitting there saying, Man, God, you know, I know that you're talking to me, but I just can't make this dot connect to this dot. I can't see the path to get to where you're telling me that I'm going to go. I can't see that path. I can't connect those dots, Lord. And so rather than try to find the way, I'm just going to walk away from you. Rather than find the path that you have and the way, I'm not going to trust you, God. I'm not going to trust that you can order the steps of a righteous man. I'm not going to trust that you will be a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. I'm not going to trust you that your word will guide and direct me. I'm not going to trust you that you that I will be the light of the world. Rather than trust you because I can't figure it out, I'm just going to walk off. There's not a believer here this morning worth his salt that has ever had it all figured out when he started. There's a trust factor. You've got to put your trust and confidence in God. We're a people that that we, we we want to have everything laid out before us. Now the Word of God tells, you know, let a man count the cost before he builds his barn. Lest he get in the middle and don't have enough to complete it. That's wisdom and that's smart and that's scriptural. But there's also such a thing as faith. And at this point, Jonah was not willing to put his faith that God would take care of him. He was not willing to operate in faith. He was not willing to even give give God a chance to direct him. He rather said, I'll just walk away. I'm going to run from the presence of God. I'm going to walk away. He thought he could run from God. He wanted to flee the very presence of God. Now, nobody in here in their right mind would consciously, hopefully, make the choice to run from God's presence. But Jonah consciously made a choice to flee from God's presence. David in the Bible. David is described a a man after God's own heart. Boy, when you get to heaven, don't you hope that God says, Brett, you were a man after my own heart. What was it that made David different 
from Jonah. David, was he, had he committed sin? Yeah. Did he mess up? Yeah. Made mistakes, didn't he? Then how could God call him a man after my own heart? Because you see, he pursued God. He pursued God. Even when he messed up, he pursued God. He pursued the presence of God. As a matter of fact, in the 55th Psalm, I think it is, he said, God, take not thy spirit from me. He prayed, Lord, don't let your Holy Spirit, don't let your presence go away from me. Can you see the difference between Jonah and David? God calls David a man after my own heart because he pursued the presence of God. He wanted to pursue God. He wanted to get in with God. He wanted to get all of God that he could. Yeah, he was imperfect and he made mistakes, but he still pursued God's heart. He pursued the presence of God. How about you? Are we pursuing the presence of God? There are people here that are pursuing God's presence. That's why when we walk in this sanctuary, the presence of the Lord is here. There are many of you that are pursuing God's presence. And so you just, you just sit back and listen for a minute. But there might be two or three or four, I don't know how many, that are here today that are actually running from God. That are running from His presence. You feel the little goosebumps and the chills and it makes you feel good. And you say, man, I don't know if I can deal with that anymore. I've actually had people tell me they didn't want to pursue being baptized in the Holy Ghost because they didn't want to have, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't want to fall out in the Spirit or they didn't want to speak in tongues because it would make them feel funny. Or it would make, and you know what that is? Pride. Pride. What makes you better? What makes you better? than anybody else. God made us all. He created us all the same. He created us in His image and in His likeness. So we find that He wanted to flee. And the thing that blows my mind about Jonah, it wasn't an accident. He chose. This was a choice He made to get away from God's presence. He thought He could run away from God. And did you know when you decide that I'm going to walk away from God's presence. I don't want it anymore. It scares me. Whatever the reason might be, it's not a good enough reason to leave God's presence. So don't let the devil trick you there. But when you make that choice, first of all, even if you hadn't made the choice, but it's just happening anyway, the devil always provides a way. He'll make it very easy for you. He will make it very easy. Are you listening, teenagers? He will make it easy for you to walk away from God's presence. Are you listening to mom and dad? Grandma, are you listening? He will make it very easy. You'll, you'll, first of all, you'll actually get to the place that you'll take Scripture and you'll make it fit what you're doing. You want me to show you how you can make Scripture fit what you're doing? I've used this before. The Bible says to Judas, talking about Judas, the Bible says in there, Judas went and hanged himself, right? There's another scripture that says, go ye and do likewise, right? And then there's another scripture that says, whatsoever thou doest, do quickly. So today, I'm going to preach this message. Judas went and hanged himself. Go you and do likewise, and whatsoever you do, do quickly. That's taking the scripture out of context and twisting it to fit what I'm wanting to say. People do it every day. Every day they take this word out of context to fit. And what they like, they keep. And what they don't like, they, they don't. They, you may as well tear it out of your Bible. Jonah chose to take this word. You say, no, he didn't have this word. I'm talking about God's word. Did God speak to Jonah? Did God give him a direction? And what did he do with it? He ran from it. That's the same as taking this book and running from it. No different. 
taking what this book says, <laughs> twisting it, turning it around so that you can do and feel and say what you want to and it's okay. I loved it this morning when Brett talked about, you know, I, I just want to be judged fair. No, you don't. I like when people come up to me and say, you're not my judge, God is. You sure you want that? <laughs> because God's going to judge by what he wrote in here, not what the, what the Supreme Court said. He's not going to judge by the laws of this land. He's going to judge by the words in his book. Now go ahead and, and say, God, I want you to be my judge. We better be pleading for mercy. We better be pleading for grace. We better be saying, God, forgive me. For I'm a sinner. But he chose to flee from God's presence. And we get down here and he made a decision. He just simply said, I won't go. He said, I'll go to Tarshish. Well, it just so happened that he went down to the port. And guess what? There was a boat there going to Tarshish. Amazing. The devil said, hmm, I'll just make it easy for old Jonah. And I'm going to provide a way for him to get away from God. Now, what, what made Jonah think that he could flee from God's presence. You see, Jonah had the mind, the concept that God was confined to a local place. He had this thinking that God was confined to Israel. And that's the only place that he operated. It, it would just be in the, in the Jerusalem, the Israel area, in that nation. And so he could get down to Tarshish and he would be away from God's operation. And therefore he could go on down there and God wouldn't bother him. Oh, man, people think that way all the time. God's not going to bother me. How many of y'all ever had God pursue you? <laughs> you can't get away from him, can you? Boy, when, when he starts pursuing, you just can't get away from him. You just can't get away from him. You need to thank God that you can't get away from him. That's a blessing that you can't get away from him. Now, Jonah wasn't going to see it as such of a blessing, but it was going to be a blessing that he couldn't get away from him. But he had in his mind that I could go down there, you know, and God's not going to be down there, so I'll just go down there. And how convenient that, that the, the ship was there waiting on him, and how convenient that Satan will make it for you to, very, to get away from the very presence of God. And you know what? Jonah got to the place that he forced God to respond. God loves you so much that you can get to the place that you will force Him to respond. You may not like the response that you get, <laughs> but you will force Him to respond. Where are you at today? Where are you at spiritually? Are you pursuing God? Or is God pursuing you? If God's having to pursue you, that means you're running away. But if you're pursuing God, you've made an about face and you're running to Him. Back in the 90s, there was a popular book, The God Chasers. Great books. Are you chasing God? Or is God having to chase you? Now God was about to have to chase Jonah because Jonah forced him to do it. Brother Rick, we live in the uh, dispensation of grace. And so God would overlook if, if I chose to flee from His presence and just ignore His command. Uh, I'll be okay. He's still going to say, oh, it's all right. That, Alicia, that was just a suggestion. You know, that was just a suggestion. I mean, it'd really be good if you did it. But you know what? If you choose not to, it's okay. I'm good. It's, Dan, look, don't, don't worry about that direction God gave you. It was just a suggestion. You, you don't have to pay attention to it.
Don't worry about the Beatitudes in Matthew 5 through 7. They're just suggestions. Oh, and, and the Ten Commandments. You know, we, uh, Jesus fulfilled the law. We don't need the Ten Commandments. They're just suggestions now. Don't preach me in the condemnation, Pastor. I've heard that till it's sick of it. Folks, God does love you. And He wants best what's best for you. But He also speaks to you personally and gives you things to do. And they're not suggestions. He speaks from His Word. And they're not just suggestions. They're the way of life. It's a lifestyle that God has planned out for us. Jonah evidently thought God was just making a suggestion. And said, you know, I'm just going to go on down here to Tarsus. And he forced God's hand. Well, Brother Rick, you know, God, God wouldn't do that these days, you know, because of this great, you know, and y'all, thank God for the grace of God. Except for the grace of God, there go I. So I, I'm not preaching against grace. I'm preaching for grace. I just happen to believe that the more you experience God's grace, the closer it brings you to Jesus. Not the, not the closer it brings you to the world. God's grace is to bring you closer to Him. Not to the world. Okay? Does that make sense? I believe that's scriptural too. So, Jonah just, he just took it as a suggestion. And he forced God to respond. Now, I'm not going to preach on God's response today. I'm going to preach on the response next Sunday. We'll get to the fish. But I want you to bow your head with me. I'm going to stop right here. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you because your word is powerful and sharp. Lord, this this message and speak to the hearts of this people. I pray, Lord, that the power of the Holy Spirit 